Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you for having me. How's this uh, event been so far, guys? Awesome. Mind blowing, mind blowing to me, right? Um, and I'll, I'll prove it to you soon. I was, I was way in the back there, the gentleman, the tall gentleman in the gray. Can you raise your hand? Where you, uh, tall, yeah, you're, yeah, you're super tall, so it has to, yeah, yeah. So I was right there in that exact same seat, October 18th of 2015. Um, I actually, what's up, Vic? Look, I got Vic. There's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of local. Who lives in Phoenix here? Beautiful, beautiful. Who, uh, who flew down here from another state? A lot of people. Well, you came to the right place. You came to the right place. This is the first real estate event that I ever attended. Me and my business partner, uh, Sal Shakir. And it changed my life forever. I actually had to, um, I had to ask my employer at the time, uh, which I was, I was in corporate America with the same company, I would say 10 to 12 years. And, you know, I had to ask, I, I, I said, hey, you know, can I please take Friday off so I can go to this event, this, you know, this, this real estate event? And my vice president said, absolutely not. If you take the day off, I'm going to write you up. Well, I got written up. <laughs> I got written up because you know what? I always knew that there had to be more. How many of you right now have a nine to five job? And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Now, for those of you that raise your hand that have a nine to five job, how many of you have that itch every time you go to your nine to five and that itch and that voice in the back of your head is saying, we're gonna get out of this and we're gonna go, go do something much greater than this. Raise your hand if that's you. Actually, let me get a clap if that's you, if you don't mind. That's amazing, that's amazing. Because what do we all want? What do we all want? Raise your hand if you know. What was that? Freedom. Freedom, that is exactly correct. And you know what's crazy, this is, this is called Extreme Freedom, and um, we threw an event in June called Freedom. And to be quite honest with you, it's because of this event. You know, this, this event and Sean Terry has influenced me in more ways than he knows. He's influenced my business partner, Sal, in more ways than he knows. Um, we absolutely love him. You know, we respect him just like all of you do. He's, he's definitely the real deal, guys. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of fluff out there, right? A lot of fluff. Everybody nowadays is a multi-millionaire. Everybody nowadays is, you know, a social media influencer, right? Every, I mean, it's getting crazy, right? Somebody does one deal and all of a sudden he's throwing events or something. It's, it's, again, this man is the real deal. He's been the real deal since, I, since the first time that I shook his hand. And he's still the real deal today. So everybody, please give it up for Sean Terry for throwing this event. Yeah. So, thank you, by the way. Sean Terry brought me up here because he visited our office. So this is what happened. I had Sean Terry come and do our podcast. We do a, a podcast. It's called uh, All, In, uh, All In Podcast. And how many of you, raise your hand if you know about the podcast, All In Entrepreneurs. You love it? Who loves it? Okay. All right. We got a few. All right. We talk about everything. It's an entrepreneur podcast, guys. Yes, there's a lot of real estate involved, but... I mean, we've had guys on there like, you know, Charlie Rocket, this guy, you know, he's a genius, this guy, you know, he's spiritual genius, mental genius. We went up to Sedona with him, spent some time with him up there. This guy truly does think outside the box. And for those of you who don't know who Charlie Rocket is, this guy used to manage, uh, he, he blew up this, this rap star called Two Chains, right? And he blew up this other rap song called Young Dolph and this other rap, I think a rap group called uh, Travis Porter. And then um, his health just went to crap. He developed a tumor in his brain and he, he just quit. Like he quit the music business, he is out. He didn't even ask for anything on his way out. He quit entirely and he started, he went vegan, started you know, focus focusing on his health 
and he reversed that tumor. He lost like 100 and something pounds. And his dream was always to be a Nike athlete, right? You can't be a Nike athlete with 300 pounds, from what I hear. So, so this man, you know, again, we have these kind of people on that podcast, by the way. So anyway, so he was, Sean Terry was in our podcast, which was a complete honor for us to have Sean Terry on our podcast. My core values align with that, where is he? There's a picture of him. My core values align with that man, and man, I absolutely have so much love for that guy. So, so anyway, we took him to the office. We're like, hey, Sean, you know, can you just come check out our operation? You know, because, you know, I grew up under Sean, right? I, I was in the back seat over there. I, I went to his monthly meetups with him and Brandon Simmons. My boy B's in here somewhere. Where's Brandon at? Brandon Bur He's somewhere around here. You guys seen Brandon, right? Bald guy, tall guy. He's a monster in this business. So I used to go to the monthly meetups on Wednesdays and uh, learned a lot. Learned a lot. And um, I was just proud. Like, I was so happy. I'm like, Sean, you got to come check out our operation. And the guy walks in, and then he's like, you know, we have a 21-year-old. Uh, uh, we call him 21 Savage. This guy, this guy's 21 years old. In the month of June, he got 21 deals by himself. 21 deals by himself. That's why we call him 21 Savage. He's 21 years old, 21 deals, broke the company record, right? And so he's like, yeah, how many deals you got? Oh, you know, I got, I got 21. I broke the company record. Great, right? Give him, you know, we got a couple of spiffs and incentives. And then uh, he looks at this other lady, you know, Jody. Oh, how I many deals you got? I got nine. Marina. Oh, I got seven. Jessica, I got five. So he's like, wait, wait, what? What's going on here, right? Sean's like, he's never seen this happen. And he's like, how, are, how is everybody getting all these deals? I'm like, well, we, uh, we don't really go on appointments. We actually make fun of people, uh, or not people, but and our team, our teammates, we kind of give them a hard time. We're like, what? You're going to an appointment? Wow. I said, I said, yeah, I remember when I had to close my first deal. You know, like we just cut, talk a little smack because if you're a good closer at, at our shop, you're closing over the phone. And there's one thing I know about real estate, something I learned really, really, really early was people, data, speed, people, data, speed. And I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you, I'm going to go through these slides and I'm going to give you some examples. And who knows Doug Hopkins? Everybody knows Doug Hopkins. Right? Doug Hopkins, if you've been in the game long enough, who knows Doug? Raise your hand if you know Doug Hopkins, no? All right, so uh, my sales director, uh, he's in here, he's in the back, Adrian. My sales director took a deal from him, virtually. Doug was supposed to walk that property on a Tuesday at 1 p.m. My sales director locked up that property on a Tuesday at 11 a.m. over the phone. I feel bad for Doug because he's a nice guy. I should reimburse him for gas money or something, right? I mean, he showed up over there and the lady was like, oh, I already signed an agreement. What? We had an appointment at, at one. That's what's important. How many of you have done a virtual deal before? How many of you still go on appointments? How many of you think that you have to go on appointments in this business? Be honest, there's no shame, by the way. There's no shame. I was going on appointments the first year, year and a half, maybe even two years. Raise your hand if you feel like you absolutely have to go on appointments. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. So, again, I'm gonna, we're gonna go over virtual wholesaling. See, the thing is, guys, you're very limited. When, you're, when you have, there's, almost, there's only so many hours of the day and there's only so much of you, right? Your bandwidth will run out. You go on four appointments, you're done. You make 10 to 20 offers over the phone, guess what, right? So, it's a numbers game. Real estate's a numbers game. So let's, let's, uh, let's jump to the first slide. So our, our month in June, that was a record-breaking month. Uh, we did $789,000. Um, we were averaging 50 to 60 deals per month in Columbus, Nashville, Charlotte, San Antonio, Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, Phoenix, Vegas, Henderson, Bakersfield, Fresno, Inland Empire, LA County, okay? We were in all these markets. But our guys started complaining because some of these deals and some of these markets, you know, they're a little, they're, they're, the average deal size is 8 to 12K, and our guys, you know, they, they want to get paid. So they're like, hey, 
we got to pull out of some of these markets. So we got out of all these markets, and now we're only doing California, Nevada, and Arizona. We got out of Texas, Columbus, Nashville. We got all, because again, our guys stay motivated. Whether we want to accept this or not, our employees are not going to operate the same way that we do. We want them to, right? We want them to operate the same way we do, but it is what it is. And they just want to get paid. They're not looking at the long, you know, the, 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 the vision down the road. They want to get paid right now. So they were like, hey, you got to get us out of these markets. What am I making, you know, on this $8,000 deal, $12,000 deal? Get me out of Charlotte, et cetera, right? So, but by the way, that, if you're in Charlotte, guys, you could get like 15 to 17 average deal size. I'm not saying that you can't, but you really got to know your own backyard to be able to do that, okay? So anyway, here we go. Does that look familiar? I told you I was in the back seat. I was way in the back. Who, who's the guy up there talking? That's Sean Terry. Look at that. That's, uh, that's actually October 18th, 2015. So I was right there. I was right in your seat. This was my first ever real estate event. This changed my mindset, this changed. I became immediately obsessed with real estate, especially wholesaling, obviously, especially when you don't have any money. I became immediately, I'm, I'm a hustler, my, my partner's a hustler. So how many of you are obsessed with real estate, by the way? Raise your hand if you're obsessed. Are you really obsessed with real estate? Be honest. For those of you that didn't raise your hand, you might not make it. How many of you are obsessed with real estate? What was that? I can't I, I didn't hear you. How many of you want freedom through real estate? So uh, here, we're going to say one thing. All right, you got some stay in your seat. If you really want freedom through real estate, when I say, what do you want? What do you think you're going to say? You're going to say what Mel Gibson said in Braveheart. What do he say? Freedom. freedom. All right. So what do you want? Freedom. What do you want? Let's go. Let's go. God willing, right? He's willing if you are. There it is. My fiance, my, she's back there with my two daughters. She wrote all my bandit signs. Took me 2,400 bandit signs in six months to get my first deal. So for those of you who've been, do, who've been doing this for a week, Oh, I can't get a fuck. Stop. Just stop. All right? Oh, I've been at it for three months. I haven't even got a... No, just please don't. Don't do it. Don't do it to yourself. Right? But, okay, I, don't get me wrong. I've been in those, I've been in that, in those shoes. I, I had doubts. I had fear. You know, I had stuff I had to overcome. Raise your hand if you've had those doubts and fear, by the way. None wrong with that. Everybody, whoever tells you that they're, don't, they don't have doubts and fears, they're lying. They're liars. They are liars. They're full of it. So, let's get going. The art of virtual wholesaling. People, data, speed. Let me hear you say that, by the way. One more time. Do you guys believe in that? People, this is, this business is about people. It always has been and it always will be. People, data, right? We need data to reach these people. We need data in our organizations to track our numbers, et cetera. They, I mean, there's a lot of data involved. Speed, this is where virtual wholesaling comes in, right? Whoever gets to that customer wins. So let's get going. Why should you be virtually closing deals? Convenience. Prospects love fast and easy. Don't we all? Prospects love fast and easy. Who uses Uber Eats here? Uber Eats, be honest, come on. I, I spend about two grand a month on Uber Eats. My fiance doesn't cook. You guys can laugh. She won't get offended. She knows that. She does other things well, but 
Definitely doesn't cook. I should have married a Hispanic lady, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, babe. Anyway, yes, Uber Eats is crazy. It's, it's yeah. Uh, so people love doing you know, business, preferably from the comfort of their own home, on their own time. This is true. We all do. And time kills all deals. Who believes that, by the way? Time kills all deals. I, can, can you guys help them clap? I mean, yeah. time kills all deals. Time kills all deals. So, real estate is a numbers game. The more calls, and when I say calls, guys, I'm not talking about cold calling. We have 35 agents dedicated to our campaign. None of them work in our office, by the way. None of them, okay? So when I say more calls, I'm talking about your acquisition managers making more calls. Depending on whatever amount of leads that you guys have, they should be making at least 50 calls a day. Minimum. And you should be tracking that if you're a business owner. And if you have a junior acquisition manager, they should be making about 85 calls per day. And you should be tracking that because they're not gonna tell you if they did or not. If you ask them, what happens, what's your name, sir? Ryan. Ryan, what happens if you ask an acquisition manager, hey, uh, hey, John, did you make your 50 calls today? What is he gonna say? Of course. I made 70, where were you at? Right, so more calls, more offers, more deals. The trifecta of virtual wholesaling, guys. Product, this, these are the things that qualify you, by the way. You gotta have a product, an idea, a concept, or a service that the prospect on the other side of the phone needs. Raise your hand if you have a service that the other, that the prospect needs. Raise your hand if you have a service that the prospect needs. Some of you don't, are, not raise, are not raising your hand. See, you, you gotta start training your subconscious mind. You gotta believe in that. You have a service that the prospect needs from you, okay? Why do you think they're willing to sell their house at a discount? Prospect must trust and connect with you. And we're gonna go over rapport building, things like that. The prospect must trust and connect with you. And this is very important. The prospect must trust and connect with your company. All right, and we're gonna give you some examples of that. Click on just email, email, PDF, whatever. All the, you know, all the deals that you've done and online reviews. Google's amazing. Yelp is great. Uh, Trustpilot's even better, to be honest. Trustpilot's hard, but it's even better. Testimonial letters. I don't know if you guys know who Nick Ruiz is from Alpha Home Flipping. Love that guy. Um, he does testimonial letters. The guy literally like, you know, he'll, he'll either, if he's doing something virtual, he'll mail it to them or, or he'll email pictures of the testimonial letters or he'll show if it's an appointment, which we're highly against. Uh, if it's an appointment, he shows up with the letters. Title company letter of recommendation. That's important. Always send them your escrow officer's name, phone number, email. Say, hey, reach out to her or him. Usually it's her, right? And well, yeah, I've never had a guy uh, escrow officer, but you know, they're out there. So yeah, say, hey, look, you know, uh, here's Suzanne. Reach out to her and, and you can talk to her and she'll tell you we do this all the time. This is a very, very common thing because people are looking for experts. Title company closing pictures, HUDs, things like that. All right, so let's talk about the three types of prospects that you are going to encounter over the phone, all right? One, closable, aka prospects that are motivated sellers, they need and want your service right now. Okay, those are the hottest. And if you don't close that deal, somebody will. That same day possibly, or that same hour, okay? Two, warm prospects. 30 to 40% of your prospects are going to be a warm prospect. They lack urgency. They need you to push them over the finish line. Do you guys understand that? Right? They're, they're literally like, they're, they have their hands out like this. They're like, look, you know, I really want to do this, but I just don't know 
what I need to do. Well, this is what you do. Boom, boom, Put, push them over the finish line. They like urgency, make it urgent. Window shoppers, unrealistic time wasters. Don't ever get discouraged because you can't close a window shopper, guys. Okay? A lot of you will like, you'll make 20 offers and the, you know, let's just say they all want retail. Don't get discouraged. They weren't even a closable prospect. They weren't even a warm prospect. They were a window shopper. They were just looking to see what they can get. And then when they figured out that they, you couldn't give them more than what Zillow says their house was worth, the deal's dead. Who cares? Move on. Next. Who believes in that every no gets you closer to a yes? I love that. I love that. That is so true, right? That is so true. Oh, no? Okay, next. Oh, yes? Okay, let's go. The contact. So, uh, deal details, gathered intelligence. So, depending on the kind of marketing that, you know, you're doing, right, when you make contact with this prospect, you want to make sure that you've gathered enough intelligence either from your cold callers, from your junior acquisition, even yourself, you know, you've gathered enough intelligence of, you got to dig a little deeper, which we're going to go into that, by the way. First impressions, which is the approach, you got to stand out somehow. You can't sound like every single company that they've encountered. You just can't. You got to stand out. You got to make a connection somehow. Okay? You got to disarm your prospect. Disarm. If you hear a dog in the background, ask them what kind of dog that is. You hear somebody playing a, a football game in the background, ask them what their favorite team is. Oh, are you watching the game? So we're going to dive deep into all this. Tonality. This is very, very important, by the way. Since you're not physically in front of them, your tonality is your physiology. Okay? However you sound on the phone, you got to sound like you're, you have bottled enthusiasm. You got to sound like you know what you're doing. You got to sound like you are what they've been looking for. Importance of tonality, and this is very important by the way, tonality is your presence over the phone. Tonality is your presence over the phone, okay? Tonalities, this is, you gotta sound certain, all right? Have you ever, I don't know if you've ever encountered a salesperson, maybe cold calling you, like to sell you some like health benefits and they just, hi, is, is this John? You know, like as you're like, okay, I'm done, bye, all right? I mean, there's no certainty there. You can't sound like that. You're gonna be a millionaire, right? Well, you're going to be a millionaire, right? Yeah. Well, then you can't sound uncertain. Millionaires are not uncertain. They know what they want, and they know how to get it. Confidence. you got to sound confident. You have to sound like the expert. People are looking for someone that is an expert in that field. You have to remember, these prospects only do this, what, once, twice in their entire life? We do this every day. We know what you need to do. You got to sound confident. Passion. By the way, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you guys. It helps a lot if you, genuinely, if you genuinely love and care for people. It helps a lot. I swear you will go so far if you genuinely love and have true care for people. There's been so many deals. So many deals where we didn't make any money, but we still got that, that prospect, that customer, whatever it is they needed. It doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, you got to do the right thing. And you'll get very far. And you know what's crazy? That person will sometimes refer to this person and that person. and Oh, they took care of me. I love them. Yeah. You best believe it. So enthusiasm. We, we, enthusiasm. we talked about enthusiasm. You got to have that bottle. I'm not telling you to be like, you know, all, just some crazy person on the phone, right? Yeah, I really want to buy your house. No, I'm not saying that. Don't, don't do that bottled enthusiasm. They got to feel your energy on the other side of that phone. But that energy has to be a reserved energy, a confident energy, a certain energy. Urgency. I mean, you got to let them know what's going on. A lot of people, especially in like when you're dealing with, let's just say like a pre-foreclosure, everybody that's in the pre-foreclosure stage or status, they're like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of this. And then they, they don't. 90% of the time they don't. 
oh, you know, I'm working on a loan modification, you know, and then they get screwed over. They lose their house. They don't walk out with any money. So you got to sound urgent. It has to, there has to be urgency there. Vibrancy. I mean, that kind of just puts it all together there. You got to be vibing with this person over the phone. You got to make a friend. You got to find a friend on the other side of that phone. We talked about rapport being 80% of the entire deal. Every single time, by the way, I promise you this. All right? Find common ground. You got to find common ground. Okay? Ask the right questions. If you are afraid to dig deep, you're not going to get the deal. Because every seller has a root cause or a root issue that is causing them to reach out to you. Yeah, they want the highest and best price for the house, but if you dig deep enough, you might uncover a problem that you can provide a solution for, and guess what? They're gonna sell to you for a lot less, okay? So you gotta ask the right questions. If you ask the right questions, if you dig deep enough, you will identify trigger and pain points because only then can you solve this person's problem. How are you gonna know, do you really think you can solve this person's problem by just saying, uh, by this person just telling you, yeah, I want you know, $200,000 for my house. Can you do that for me cash? Are you, I mean, are you gonna solve their problem? No. Money is just one part of the, of the equation, okay? 80-20 rule, 80% rapport building, connecting with the prospect, 20% of it ends up being business. As crazy as that sounds, we're all so concerned about, oh, well, how are we gonna make this happen? How am I gonna put this deal together, right? 80% of it is rapport building. This much is freaking the transaction, the details of the transaction. And I'm, going, I'm trying to go fast because we got 31 minutes. First uh, negotiation, guys, you guys ever hear of uh, the first number loses, right? First number loses? Who's ever heard of that? Raise your hand. First number loses. Can someone tell me? What's your name, sir? Onward. What is it? Onward. On, on water? Yep. Okay. All right, sorry if I mispronounced that. Okay. All good. Um, why does the first number lose? Well, the person that says the first number gives out the number that they didn't want to be. So. Okay. Absolutely, you know, because it never ends up being that number, right? That's why the first number loses. It's not because, like, you know, they didn't get what they want or whatever. No, it's not. It's because it never ends up being that number in a negotiation. So, I suggest that you always try to get a number out of the prospects. Corner them. A lot of people don't want to give you a number, but if you corner them, right? If you corner them, this was, was it Ryan's here, Ryan? Yeah. Ryan, look, listen, you know, it's been amazing talking to you, and by the way, I... You sound like you're a person that really knows what they want. And I respect that. I don't encounter too many you know, sellers and, and clients uh, that know what they want. So you know, just, let's, just give me a ballpark. I won't even hold you to it. Give me a ballpark number. I won't hold you to it. Just give me a ballpark number. See, I'm putting him in a corner. He doesn't want to disappoint me. Right? Because, oh, well, if I don't give him a number, then I'm going to sound like I don't know what I want. You see, it's, it's all psychological, right? It's all psychological. So if Ryan doesn't give me a number, then he's gonna feel disrespected because I'm a price anchor him. Who knows, who's a pri who knows what a price anchor is? For those of you who doesn't know what a price anchor is, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? Okay, great, well here we go. So Ryan says, Ryan, Ryan doesn't want, Ryan's house is worth 250 grand. And he's like, you know what, Carlos? No, no, just give me an, I cannot get, I cannot squeeze a number out of Ryan to save my life. So, I said, okay, Ryan, well, you know what? Um, I, you know, I ran this through and through, and, uh, you know, we've bought properties in that area before, and his house is worth 250 by the way, keep in mind. You know what? Uh, we're probably going to be um, around $157,950 of 17 cents. That is all I can squeeze out. Ryan's going to be like, what? He's going to feel disrespected. Oh, whoa, 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 Ryan, hold on, hold on. You, 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 you forced me to give you a number. I ran it through my system. This is where we're at. 
I am so, where were you? Sorry, sir, I asked you for a number, right? I asked you for a number. Oh, I'm not even close to that number. So anything on top of 157,900, I don't know what random number I threw out there, right? Anything on top of that is a win for who? For Ryan. Anything on top of that 150, by the way, I just offered him 100 grand less for his, than what his house is worth. So anything on top of that number, that's, that's, what, that's what's called a price anchor. Anything on top of that number, Ryan's winning. Oh, I'm not even close to that. Okay, Ryan, where are we at? Where do I need to be? Look, you want to sell your house, I want to buy your house. Where do we need to be? Uh, I'm closer to 170. Right? Oh. By the way, you never, over the phone, you never, you never, yes! Oh, Lord, thank you. No, you don't do that. If you are, just mute it, please. Like, we've, some of our guys have done that. Do not do that. Okay? Don't do that. If you do that, what's going to happen to the deal? Ryan's going to be like, man, what the hell? <laughs> Done. You never hear from him again. He goes dark on you. So if you are going to do that, mute the phone. Be respectful. So, <laughs> price anchor, right? That, that is what a price, guys, a price anchor, oh my goodness, it will, it will change your life. Raise your hand if you think a price anchor will change your life. I love that. You can start getting some deals now, right? You can start getting some deals now, right? So, price justification. It's always, I'm always on Ryan's team. And I know it sounds like I'm picking on Ryan. I just, Ryan's an easy name to remember. I'm always on Ryan's team. Ryan, it's me and you versus the data, man. I know you live on Thomas, but look, we just did a property right there on Earl. And, you know, this is how much it took us to bring it up to market condition. This is what we were able to sell it for. It's me and you. I want to give you everything that you want, but it's me and you versus the data right now. I'm on your side. We're on the same team. We want to get this done. You guys understand that? And always focus on value over the offer. Now, the value you're providing is if you dig deep enough, you're solving a problem, okay? So, and you can always say that, you know, the usual common wholesale stuff like, well, Ryan, keep in mind that, you know, we are paying all your closing costs. We're going to close in, you know, 10 to 14 days. And, uh, you know, this is going to be the easiest thing you've ever done. You know, this is a cash transaction, owner to owner. That's, you know, that's value. Even though that's kind of outdated. There has to be a little more than that these days. Always follow offer made with silence. So, remember, let's just say that I'm in the ballpark where Ryan needs to be. Well, Ryan, you know what? I'm going to come in at about $167,350 with 25 cents. Do you think we can move forward with that? He said yes. Guys, he said yes. Come on now. He said yes. Let's go. Thank you, Ryan. You got yourself a deal. So, prepare the close. Guys, if you are making this crazy mistake of saying, well, Ryan, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, send you the, uh, the written offer to your email. Get back to me when you got time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, it's going to be in your email, and uh, yeah, we'll talk next week or something. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. All right, so Ryan's there, right? I'm, uh, I'm in Phoenix. He's in Vegas. Hey, Ryan, are you by a computer by any chance? As a matter of fact, I am. Oh, you're not? You're not? Okay, so, well, I mean, come on. Now. Everybody has a computer. Okay, are you by your phone? Jesus. What, do you have an Android or something? I'm just joking. I'm joking. <laughs> joking. I, I think Android people are great. They deserve to have their own little island somewhere. It's, it's a... <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. All right. So, well, okay. You're not by a computer. You're by, an, you're by your phone, right? You have a smartphone. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to send you the, I'm going to send you the written offer. You see that? What did I say? Why am I saying written offer over contract? Contract. 
Boom. Don't you feel like you're in handcuffs? Wait, a contract? What's, what's going on here, right? A contract? Oh my God, I'm entering a contract? No, no, no I'm going to send you the written offer. Are you by your smartphone? Okay. He's by his smartphone. All right. All right, Ryan. Well, here, let me, uh, here, put me on speaker real quick. Right? Boom, speaker. Okay. Well, Ryan, look, you know, this is the written agreement, uh, written offer, whatever you want to call it, right? Always don't say contract. We don't say the C word, okay? So here's the written offer. Um, let's walk through it. You know, one says it's, it's, your, you know, your, it's, it's your name, it's your property, we're the company, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, three says, you know, we're buying that cash as is, blah, blah, blah. But do you see what I just did? Who saw what I just did? No, 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 no. What was that? I had to make sure that he was ready right now. I didn't send him a freaking email and say, get back to me whenever you get it. No, hell no. What did we say earlier? People, data. People, data. Boom. People, data, speed. I got, I got, if I don't get, see what happens is, if I send this man a, an agreement, all right, and we're, we're, he's hot right now, we're ready, right? We're, we're vibing, we're, everything is ready to go. If I don't get this man to sign this agreement right now, and he goes home and he digesses, and I go, well, how much more can I get actually? Start shopping my contract around, right? We don't want him doing that. We, got, we need it right now. Come on now. What if that's a $30,000 assignment? $50,000 assignment? Sal and I did a, uh, there's two things that we will always, always, always remember. By the way, no, three things. One, you will always remember your first deal. You will always remember your first deal. Two and three, you will always remember your biggest deals. Sal and I, in December of 2016, we, f we wholesaled 27 properties and made over a quarter million dollars. 27 properties, a package deal that came out of, um, what was that called, Sal? What was that company called? SBN. And then they got smart. Because we, we flipped those properties, 27 properties to one buyer. And they're like, oh my, because they were just getting in the game. You know, SBN like was in the wholesaling game or whatever. Flip 27 properties in one shot. The next time they're like, oh, no, no, we gotta, you're going to have to pay us more for the properties. That's all right. You know what? We'll take the gift. And then the other one was, people did a speed, watch this. Vegas, George. You remember George, Sal? Right? What was that? Yes. So we, Sal and I used to be in this little, we call it the boiler room, because it was like 300 square feet, brick, 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 no window, ceiling fan that didn't work and it was dusty as shit. And then the swamp cooler didn't work. We called the boiler room. I mean, it was hot in there. We were, we were banging out deals. So this guy gets a direct mail, and, uh, and I think it was a cold call or something from us. Okay. From what? Okay. We buy houses direct mail, appointment on a Tuesday, pay-per-click. The guy, for some reason, had an appointment already scheduled with... Uh, one of our good friends, Travis Schur, who, uh, who owns uh, We Buy Houses in Vegas, that franchise. And um, George just hits us up, pay-per-click, right? Boom. And yeah, you know, I got some guys coming on Tuesday. Well, George, what, what do we need to do to make this happen right now? I mean, why wait till Tuesday? You know, where, where do we need to be? Blah, 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 blah. Urgency, you know, everything we just went over. How much was that assignment for, Sal? 98 grand, guys. 98 grand. Let's go. By the way, always celebrate other people's wins. Always. You're putting out good energy onto the universe. You see somebody, you see somebody winning? Okay, you see somebody winning? You celebrate. Good job. Right? You go, girl. Let's, I'm next. So, <laughs> that's right. I love my man right here. I'm loving this. All right, what's your name, sir? Lou. Lou? Lou. L-U. L-U-E. L-U-E? L- Oh, L-E-W? Wow. I've never... I got two friends that are called Lou, 
and they don't spell their names that way. But one of them, his name is Luis. He just calls himself Lou to be American. All right, so <laughs> I think that's why. So anyway, all right, so uh, email access. He has email access. Let's get this thing signed right now. Confirm a convenient time they're available to talk and possibly receive a written offer. And we just kind of went over that. If the seller is not available to sign while final offer is being submitted, leave an offer range instead of a firm price because they won't shop an offer range, but they will shop a price, all right? Get your prospect to pre-commit. So Ryan, you're saying that if I come up to 170 grand today, we're gonna move forward. He said, yeah. Okay. Are you by a computer? He is now. Now that, he got, now, now, now that he's doing what he wants. So, the closing table, where all the magic happens. Get a verbal commitment, kind of just did. State the convenience of using DocuSign to sign documents. This is just in case he asks, but as you guys know, I'm sending him a DocuSign right now. You can integrate that with your Podio, okay? Walk the sellers through the process. I mean, you gotta know your agreement, all right? You gotta know your agreement. If you don't know your agreement, you're in trouble. You're gonna scare them. Stay available to answer any questions, concerns, objections. Let's get this thing signed right now. Do you have any questions or concerns, you know? Reaffirm the benefits of working with you and the next steps and expectations. Common objections, here we go. This happens to all of us, whether it's an appointment or on the phone. Not enough, you know, oh no, that's not enough money. I'm not taking that. Well, remember, I used, try to use data, right? It's me and you versus, it's me and you versus the data here. You know, this is how much it's gonna take to bring it up to market value. We flipped two properties on the other side of, you know, that block, and this is what we were able to sell it for, et cetera, right? Um, also, you know, when it comes to money, you gotta make sure that they understand the value that you're bringing to them. It's not just about the money, and again, you're able to get rid of the money side for the most part if you dig deep enough. So, oh, I don't know, my wife's not here. Okay, well, can we get her on the phone, right? You can easily, or well, can I call you right back? When is she gonna be home? I'll call you at five. Okay, you gotta overcome these objections. You, you know, most, more than likely, the, the husband might be the decision maker, or maybe it's the wife, in my case, all right? I wear the pants, joking. Who wears the pants, Lou? She, uh, exactly, okay. Well, uh, Lou, I'm gonna need to talk to her, not you. So, time frame. Oh, you know, I'm thinking about next month sometime. Blah. Well, listen, Lou, we're only looking to buy about five more properties by the end of the month. I'm really trying to get this done. You know, this is a golden opportunity. Bird in the hands, better than two in the bush. Let's do this, Lou. What's, what's holding you back? Come on. You gotta talk to the wife? Put her on the phone. She's not here? Well, let me skip trace her. Hold on, I'm gonna get on the phone. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> lawyer. Everybody has a lawyer, right? Oh, I gotta run this by my lawyer. Well, let's run it by your lawyer. I'm sure I'll be able to answer, you know, my, my lawyers put this agreement together to protect you and us. Let's get them on the phone because I'm gonna know more about this agreement than you are. And he's gonna have a couple of questions and concerns. I wanna make sure that you're comfortable, he's comfortable, and everybody's doing good business here. Family, there's always a family member somewhere, right? Uncle Lou just pops out of the bushes, hey, I don't sell that house for that much, right? Well, hell, what, what is Lou gonna do? Oh, he's a realtor, right? <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time, right? No, so, well, you know, you, again, lack of, like family-wise, hey, look, listen, I don't know what they want to do or what they don't want to do, but I'm ready to do what you ask them to do right now. Realtors, no disrespect to any of you realtors in here, but realtors are lazy. Who's a realtor? Raise your hand. Some. Some realtors. Some realtors. Not all realtors. 99.99% of realtors are lazy, so you're, you're the point zero one. Raise your hand if you're the point zero one. You're not lazy, okay. That's why you're here, all right. All right. So, yeah, some, you know, realtors, they, they overpromise, right? Oh, your house is worth, no, it's not worth 250, Lou. Your house is worth 300. Yeah, let's get 300 for it. 
One month later, Lou, we gotta, drop, we gotta price drop this thing, man. We're not getting enough traffic. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, some of you recognize that, right? Two months later, Lou, I don't know what's going on at this point. <laughs> We're gonna have to give this thing away, man, but I still want my commission. The close, again, when I made the offer to Mr. Ryan here, did I sound confident? Did I sound confident? I wasn't like, well, Ryan, would you take 170, right? What? No, who are you? I called the wrong guy. You a taxi driver? So anyway, focus on the value, right? Paint the final picture. Show them how, how you're gonna make their life easier. Ryan, listen. I know that you got to relocate to North Dakota or wherever Ryan's from. Where are you from? Oh, go Spurs. Oh, come on, man. You're not a Spurs fan. You live in. Oh, come on. Chicago. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. Go Spurs. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Ryan, look, I know that you got to relocate from San Antonio to North Dakota in the next 30 days. I know you need, this, you need the money right now so you can kind of just get your life going. You know what, I can possibly even offer you a $2,500, $3,000 cash advance so you can kind of get everything going while we're figuring everything out, you know, while Tito's doing their thing, et cetera. Like, again, you know, paint the final picture. Listen, look, I'm gonna get you out of this. We're gonna make this happen. You're not gonna have to worry about either renting the place or putting this thing up for sale, going through inspections, et cetera. You don't have to worry about that. This guy, John, he, um, he, was, he was unemployed, and he thought that his, uh, his, his uh, and I remember all the details, because you'll always remember all the details. This was one of the last deals that I closed. Um, his his, his uh, girlfriend, it wasn't fiance, girlfriend was a nurse. And he's like, Carlos, man, I haven't, I haven't worked for six months. I'm tired of my girlfriend coming home and seeing all the bills on the table. I have anxiety. I'm going crazy. Right? And I'm like, John, look, listen, this is what we're going to do, man. We're going to buy your property and you're going to have all this extra cash. Your girlfriend's going to come home. The only bill she's going to see on the table are the ones that you put paid on. Paid, 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 paid. Right? You're going to start a new life. You're going to get a fresh start. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be, you're gonna be employed in the next three months. We're going to get you out of this. We're going to bounce back. Boom. Sign with us for a lot less than somebody else. 80 something K, thank God, praise the Lord, right? So, did I paint a picture for him? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Your girlfriend is gonna be so proud of you. She's gonna, she's gonna, she's gonna remember the man that she met. Like, I, I went deep. <laughs> I went deep, I'm not gonna lie to you, I went pretty deep. So, virtual closing resources. Guys, listen, do not make the same mistake me and Sal made. When we started uh, virtually wholesaling in other states, we would team up, we would JV, joint venture with other uh, wholesalers, and they would take 50% of our cut. So then we got smarter. We, we started hiring boots on the ground, okay? For $100, take pictures, $200. If, if this person is like 90 years old and they absolutely need a piece of paper, you know, hey, if you get the, you know, you just go over there, you know, polo, everything, get the agreement signed, take the pictures, 200 bucks. $200 is a lot better than a couple, you know, 10, 20, $30,000, right? Bless you. But you can also, you know, get boots on the ground. You can use social media. You can, you know, uh, Craig, I don't know what, you, there's so many ways you can get boots on the ground there. Wegolook.com, um, 123notary.com, it, it looks very professional when you hire a notary to go and take the pictures and get the agreement signed and you know, it looks very professional. Oh my God, this guy just sent a notary over here. This is legit. This is legal. Local realtors, just be careful, all right? Uh, just promise that, you know, just say, hey, look, I'm gonna give you 200 bucks and you know what? I can potentially give you some listings in that area because we get a lot of retail leads, et cetera. Whatever you gotta do, come on, you're a salesperson. Social media, Facebook, Instagram. Listen, I was born into Dirt, dirt, dirt poverty in Mexico. Um, my mom never made more than $8.25 an hour. 
You know, she worked two jobs to sustain me and my brother. We were on food stamps back when they had like the book, right? Not the car that's all fancy now, right? And, uh, you know, she taught me work ethic, you know? She taught me work ethic. And she taught me that, you know, you never, ever quit. And there's a lot of sacrifices that come with the journey. But you're gonna have to trust the process. There's gonna be times where you wanna give up. There's gonna be times where you, you're gonna cry. There's gonna be times where it's gonna hurt. But just know that it's part of the process. And just know that those things are happening for you, not to you, okay? My goal, just like a lot of people's goals initially, was I, I always dreamed of becoming successful. I was, I was a little kid, I just wanted to have my own business become successful. And I always wanted to break, you know, generational curses. You know, my, my father was not around, he's a POS. Uh, you can laugh, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> and uh, I'm a better dad to my baby girls than he ever was to me and my brother. Okay? Thank you. I'm getting married on November 23rd. Thank you. So there's one generational curse. And I wanted to create, God willing, in his name, wealth for a few generations after me. Because no one ever made the sacrifice. No one before me, maybe they tried, I don't know, you know? But someone has to make the, someone has to be the lamb. Someone has to make the sacrifice. Now, is that gonna be you? Are you willing to make the sacrifices that it takes to be massively successful? If you're not clapping, Guys, my gift to you today, um, it's a uh, cl uh, closing guide. It, um, I'll have my CFO shoot it to you guys. All you gotta do is text all in to 77948. We're gonna give you a, mas uh, a cold calling mastery script that, we, that our 35 agents use. And we're gonna give you a, closer, a closing guide, a virtual closing guide put together by my sales director and Alex assigned sales director, Andy Garcia, my sales director, Adrian Salgado. These guys spent so much time putting this closing guide together. So if you text all in one word to that number, I promise you, I'll make sure she gets it to you. All right, that's my gift to you. Thank you, Lou. Thank you. And I'm done.